Wow. <laughs> In last episode, we took you for a very serene extended tour as we ascended the Chagres River in Panama. We enjoyed an incredible night under the stars and a beautiful morning. And this episode, we're going to take you for a similar ride as we go for our first tour in our nearly silent electric dinghy. But for those of you that get bored if something doesn't break, well, we have something for you too. Can you say So thanks for coming to watch the video, you guys. We really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy, and we'll talk to you in the comments. Ciao, Tiki. See you soon. You can see how much current there is just by the anchor chain. Yeah. So quiet. Yeah, it's peaceful. We need to come here more frequently. More often. <laughs> That's only drawing 60 watts. Say how long, how fast we go. 60 watts. Yeah, 1.2 knots. 1.2. Yeah. It's good if we make a squish on it. You bring it up to 200 watts. Too much sound, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't listen there. I don't know the birds, nothing. The water's too noisy now. Yeah. <laughs> At 200 watts, yeah, we're smoking. <laughs> so much noise. <laughs> we have 3.8. We got 2.5 knots. Yeah. It's so peaceful. to be zipping along at three and a half knots. <laughs> Surprising, yeah, we thought it would be perfectly silent, but it's the water noise. No engine noise, but you're so used to hearing the engine drown everything out. Now all we hear is the water noise. But yeah, we're gonna zip down there because we're going against the current right now, so we have to go faster to get upstream. But then we can turn around and come nice and slow downstream and just listen to everything as we pass by. Let's stop one night more here. <laughs> without you, man, without sound of... That's a big tree just hanging out over the water. Like the rapid time. Yeah. Yeah.
Just started moving backwards with the current. Yeah. Nature in the absence of man. See by the trees, we're moving backwards. Pretty good now. Somebody having breakfast over there? Mm -hmm. Monkey, they are here. Look at mm -hmm. you saw a monkey. Yeah. We're gonna jump on it. Boy, the river's really eroded away the land. Yeah, better watch out once we get in here now. Huh? Do we want to hit our prop? 
crop on something. Today, everybody inside the jungle. Oh, they're all just big monkeys at the end of the day. Mm. Less fur. Yeah. Uh, with this dengue, you can do it. Les ouvrir la sonne pour que nous voilons le dernier. What kind of noise is that? <laughs> Sounds like a raspberry. What's that noise? Oh, it's humans. humans. Yeah, humans. Yeah. Internal combustion engines. How primitive. <laughs> <laughs> how pretty. Know. Listen how loud they are. How quiet we are.
Look at the humans. Can always tell their presence. Noise. <laughs> So disruptive. <laughs> oh, smell that. Yeah. Very thick fragrance. Okay, then with another day without smelling that. No, the flowers. You didn't smell? Oh. Yeah, I well, after, smell the, I smell. after the diesel, it's going to take a while. <laughs> like jasmine. Oh, gasoline. Like jasmine or... Um... Mm -hmm. Oh, the name, Mangilan. Oh, the little entrance. Yeah, I love the little inlets. The monkeys love to go jump across there. Wow. Oh, that goes on quite a bit. Yeah. It's a ton of love, too. Cool. Cool. Uh huh. The sound of their wave hitting the boat. Oh. What the, is this? The shore. Another human. Yeah, but quiet, peaceful humans. Yeah. We come in peace. Okay, so I guess there's a vote to be had. Who wants to spend another day? Here. Yeah. Who wants to leave? I don't want to leave. <laughs> but I do want to get to sand blast and phenomenal. No, it's up to you guys. You gotta decide what you wanna do. How long do you think we'll be able to do One week. Yeah. At least the weather's been more cooperative lately, so we shouldn't spend as much downtime like last time waiting to get stuff done. Mm. That's a nice shot of the lady. And Stanley is fast to do the job. The lady's a little dirty, but she looks like an explorer. Well, the cool thing is when you come up into a freshwater river, if you spend any amount of time, all the growth on the bottom dies. Uh -huh. Okay, we stop for one night. Yes, yeah, <laughs> even the boat says we stay. Hola, tiki tiki. Touchdown. And today is quiet, take a sun, nice breakfast. <laughs> Chill out. Yeah, it's up to you guys. So we just found a major problem. The exhaust pipe is severed, which is creating a influx of water into the bilge that basically submerged everything in the bilge the first time getting here into Chagros River. And now we're finding that the actual exhaust pipe is completely severed, which is a major, major problem. Oh yeah, the whole top of the pipe is just gone. It's like it lasted its last leg and then just imploded. Now, the problem is accessibility because it's right up inside this corner. <sighs> the vent tube is right beside it. Which I can probably untie and move out of the way. But, it's right at a 90 degree bend also. We don't have anything to fix a 90 degree bend in three inch solid exhaust holes. So the question remains, can we get enough access at it and duct tape the shit out of it until we can get to a marina where we can get parts? So I have some straight three inch pipe, but this is right at the 90 degree bend and it's right on the top of the elbow and it's just completely destroyed. It's just soft. This is like rock hard tubing. And over here I can put my finger through it. Yeah, it's gone. I can, I got my hand in the tube right now. So we need to change the tube. The exhaust is too. Wow. That's a piece of the tube. Amazing. Yeah, it's just completely come apart. So 
so it lived its last life but see this is <laughs> this is part of the engine project because one of the things i knew is this tube is degrading i've had to splice it twice before in different places on the engine i never suspected or thought that this side because this is always the side that stays dry whenever the engine stops water runs down so it doesn't sit there all the other places were in the low spots of the hose where water just sat for years and years and years but yeah this is different this is right in the top of the pipe so the only thing could be attributed to that is maybe it's the point where the hottest gases from the exhaust are always collecting when it's running is this dry yeah Thanks. but yeah we're not going to be running this for any extended periods of time or we're going to fill the back of the boat with exhaust and we'll be counting on the bilge pump to keep us afloat. If the bilge pump stops, then we have immediate problems. I guess so, that means next stop, Shelter Bay. Well, right now, even to get there, four hours of motoring, you remember how full the bilge was last time? If that bilge pump stops, we have a big problem. Yeah, which means we take advantage of the wind as much as we can, run the motor as least as we can. Yeah, but we still have three three miles of river to get out of. That's at least an hour of motoring. We need to take this apart right now and see what we can do. We need to band-aid it somehow to at least contain the major amount of liquid that's coming out of the system. So the first thing we need to do is empty this drawer because this is a piece of plywood that's in there just dropped in and framed in. I think if we take that out and possibly take this speaker out, we'll be able to see the exact part where the problem is and get two hands on it and possibly just wrap it with duct tape or something you know a solid amount of duct tape just if to get us use through. use one little tube that we have. So inside. all right let's work on that. So we got to empty this and take that speaker out. So the speaker needs a Phillips screwdriver. Okay, so you want to see the issue we've got to deal with now? Are you ready to start? Ready. Okay, start the motor. Yeah, watch this. Oh yeah, see that's our muffler tube right there. There's the exhaust outlet right there. But it's not reaching the exhaust outlet because it's all leaking out right there. Okay. Can you say F Yeah. This is going to be a challenge. <sighs> That's more challenge than we need on a Monday morning at nine o'clock in the morning when we're supposed to be on the ocean. Yeah, we're not going anywhere till that gets patched we can't fix it but we're gonna have to try and patch it so so all i can think is we're gonna have to find something that is kind of a heat resistant wrap that's flexible it can wrap around it as a barrier and then duct tape the crap out of it just to hold it together until we can get to a place and find a suitable piece of hose to replace it with so that is our day yeah how are we looking? That's coming. Speaker coming? These are. Okay, good. Oh, man. And then same thing, I think there's just a few bolts here that hold this shelf in there. If we can get that out, we'll have access to the whole tube because it's just on the other side of this right here. It should be right in here somewhere. Uh, just to like see if you look right here. I don't know if you can. Here, let me see. Oh, look how many water. Right there, that's the last place I had to replace an elbow, and I did it with a piece of PVC that we got at a hardware store, and it goes all the way back, and that's worked perfect. But that was right at that elbow too, and now it comes up here, it goes across here, and somewhere in here it dies can't see it we need to we need to cut these clips 
to get them out of the way so we can drop the, so we need wire cutters. Por favor. Wow, look at these. Yeah. There it is. There is our problem. Okay, well, we have access to it now. We need to find something we can wrap that tube in to just absorb heat. Yeah. It's not going to be too much heat because it's water cooled, but we need to wrap it severely with something and then wrap the shit out of it with <laughs> duct tape. Wow, and look that... how many is destroyed. How is possible? Well, it's 26 years old. No, buddy. I understand it, but in one time it's like splotting. See, it's got abrasion points even here where it's been rubbing up against the hull for you 26 saw? years. So it's definitely, I mean, it needs to be replaced, but this is on my list as part of the engine replacement. This is one of the parts I knew that needs to be replaced is this exhaust tube, because I've had to fix it twice before. And my patches are holding good because I made them out of solid PVC, and a lot of people are like, don't use PVC, it'll melt. No. <laughs> it doesn't even come close to the melting temperature because all of the exhaust is cooled within the water exchange muffler first. So the water lift muffler injects water into the muffler with the exhaust and that cools the exhaust and then the whole pressure, the whole mixture just comes out under pressure, just out under the, uh, the, the vent. The same ever one piece is in the bed, in the fine you saw? This? No. You saw then is is up? Oh yeah, the whole thing is going to explode. Oh, wow. Right now all we can do is contain the leak that we have. We get it back to the dock. Yeah, and plasma. And I get another one of these acrylic, t or a uh, PVC elbows because the elbow is the important part because it's right at the 90 degree turn. See, that's the issue. If I could cut the tube even here and go across with an elbow and back down to the exhaust, then we'd be okay. But I don't have the actual elbow. I have the tubing, but not another elbow. I have all the rubber clamps to adapt it all together to adapt to this tube from the PVC tubing. I kept it all as spares because I used you know, a few of them the last time, and then I kept the rest as extras, but the one thing I didn't have, I don't have, is another one of these elbows, and that's the one thing we should have had. What can you do? You keep as many spares as you can think of for as many years as you can think of, but sooner or later something happens, you don't have it. So that's where we do a sailor fix at sea, and we patch the crap out of it with duct tape. Okay. Duct tape. <laughs> Let's find the duct tape. Well, as fate would have it, I carried spares. I didn't know I had this guy, but I just dug around looking for some of these because I had these rubber couplers. These are great for splicing pieces of big exhaust tubing and stuff like that together when you need to. Now, this one's too big. It's four inch. You can see it's a lot larger than that. You can see there, but we're going to use this guy. So I've got some of the three inch couplers as well. So the three inch one is the proper diameter. Now, this is a bit too big of a project to get into out here because it involves taking time, cutting the tubing. We've got the three inch PVC tubing. It needs to be glued and spliced and put together and then coupled together with these onto the main exhaust tube. That we're gonna save for the marina. Right now, I'm gonna take one of these and cut it because it's already formed to the exact size of the tube. We're gonna cut it, wrap it around it just to give it some shape, and then duct tape all around the outside of this thing. And that should contain, you know, it's not gonna be perfect, but it should contain 80 to 90% of our water and exhaust, hopefully. Keep it going back overboard. We get to the marina, we can get Stanley working on his projects again, because we need some metal work done on the boat, and we can focus on repairing this piece, you know, even temporarily just until we replace the entire piece of hose because the whole thing's got to be replaced as part of the new engine replacement. That was all part of the plan, but of course this piece said, nah, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. 26 years, and it goes today. Oh well, what can you do? Back to work. So what we need here is our X-Acto knife. And basically we're just gonna cut this open Hopefully. Okay. Like so. There. And now, see we have something with the perfect form factor to wrap around this. 
just like so, like a big band-aid, and then we'll duct tape around it. So we're gonna put that over here, where the big part of the problem is. All right, so I need to cut a little bit of this off. Let's see how much. Not too much, actually, that's pretty good. We'll leave it like that. So we put this down onto the bad section. Like so, right there, and then yeah, we're going to duct tape all around this and seal it all up as best as possible, and then start the engine and see if that will get us rolling again. Okay, duct tape por favor. Are you ready? This is what we call a Captain Rick Band-Aid. <laughs> but hey, whatever works. We don't know if it's going to work, but we'll give it a little test and see if we reduce some of the water. We just got to be careful we don't kink this because that side's going to break next thing. That's where our next issue is, so hopefully that side right there will last long enough to get us back to where we need to go. But for now, let's test this. You can see water hitting the hose. We got a little bit of leak there. So I can try to wrap a bit more duct tape down around further. And that's not too bad. It's definitely contained a lot of the issue. Not leaking there yet. Okay, but that looks like that should get us back. We just need to tie this hose up so it's stabilized take some of the weight off the elbow put it back up here like that yeah a little bit more duct tape around that lower section maybe one more wrap around the whole thing will help contain some more of it but I think that should get us going and well, hopefully back to the marina without flooding the bilges again so we'll give that a try all right I'll do one more wrap on the bilge or on the duct tape and then we can put all this stuff away if you want to get a bag to put all the safety gear and stuff in. Yeah, that's got it. I've only got a slight drip over there now, huh? Excellent. Alright, so we're contained over 90%. All the exhaust and the water is going out through the exhaust outlet now, proper. Except for that one last little drip. That we can deal with. Okay, we're in business. <sighs> Let's get moving. Time's a wasting. Under sail, engine down. We're doing four knots. We got six knots on the beam, apparent wind, so not bad, but it's nice to not have to listen to the engine. And we give it a little rest so that our exhaust manifold repair <laughs> can take a break also, which held perfectly by the way, so very happy about that. So, so far so good. And we've got 23 nautical miles to Portobello, so it's gonna be a long afternoon especially at four knots, but we'll sail as much as we can and then motor when we have to. So that's the plan. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> 